Hello everyone. This video is about mechanisms involved in the regulation of enzyme activity. Before going to details of this topic, if you are watching my video for the first time, please subscribe, like it and share it. So normally, enzymes are responsible for the catalysis of almost all biochemical reactions that takes place in our body, in our tissues and cells. So generally, billions of reactions are taking place in our cells. Uh, all those reactions, they are catalyzed by these enzymes. But why enzyme regulation is necessary? We know that huge number of reactions are taking place in our cells. For that, we need enzyme regulation. So enzyme regulation is required to coordinate the metabolic processes and for altering the rate of a pathway according to a requirement. So let us see the importance of this enzyme regulation with a simple example. During vigorous exercise, you can see the person in the picture, the energy requirement increases. To meet this demand of energy, the rate of energy yielding catabolic pathways is increased, whereas the rate of energy requiring anabolic pathways is suppressed. So this rate of catabolic pathways is increased by increasing the activity of the enzymes whereas the rate of anabolic pathways is decreased by suppressing the activity of the enzymes which are involved in the anabolic pathways. And now coming to the examples of catabolic pathways and anabolic pathways. So in this picture you can see on left side of the picture the catabolic pathway that is glycolysis. So the glycolysis is concerned with the production of ATP, so the energy currency of the cell. So this ATP is utilized during the exercise. Now whenever a person is doing exercise, the rate of this catabolic pathway is increased and that in turn depends upon the activity of the key enzymes regulating the glycolysis. So about key enzymes, I prepared a video, we can see that. So I'll put that in the I, I button. Now coming to the anabolic pathways. So here the example is gluconeogenesis. This particular pathway uses energy for the synthesis of glucose. But in this situation, that is whenever a person is doing exercise, we are not supposed to use that energy for other purposes. So energy is required for doing the exercise. For that, the rate of gluconeogenesis is decreased. So other way, whenever rate of glycolysis is increased, rate of gluconeogenesis will be decreased. So whenever glycolysis is active, gluconeogenesis is inactive. So this anabolic pathway is inactive because the enzymes regulating this gluconeogenesis, they are not active. Right? So this is about example of catabolic and anabolic pathways. Now coming to the major mechanisms which are involved in the regulation of enzyme activity. Those are allosteric regulation, covalent modification and induction and repression. So among these three mechanisms, allosteric regulation and covalent modification are short term regulations whereas induction and repression is a long term regulation. Now coming to details about the allosteric regulation, for that we need to know what is allosteric enzyme. The details of allosteric enzyme, I prepared a video, you can check the i button. But here in brief, allosteric enzyme is any enzyme which contains an extra site other than the active site. The example is phosphofructokinase, the main regulatory enzyme of the glycolysis. So this is an example for allosteric enzyme and this activity is regulated by ATP and AMP. So whenever ATP level is more in a cell which indicates the energy rich state, in such condition ATP binds with the allosteric site of the phosphofructokinase and it decreases its activity by preventing the binding of the substrate that is phosphofructose 6-phosphate. But whenever AMP level is more, it indicates the low energy state in such condition. Now 
AMP binds at the allosteric site and increases or facilitates the binding of the substrate to the active site of the enzyme. So thereby it forms the more product. So this is how the allosteric regulation takes place depending on the cellular requirements by some signals. Here the signal meaning is it may be ATP or AMP. Now coming to second type of short term regulation that is covalent modification. So covalent modification is nothing but it is addition or removal of groups which results in increased or decreased enzyme activity. So when you add a group or remove a group the enzyme activity may be increased or decreased. So addition and removal of such groups is called as covalent modification. Now coming to the total number of modifications there are over 500 different types of covalent modifications that are found in the proteins. And now we will see how these modifications are taking place on the proteins. Now whatever groups that are used in the covalent modification, so they are added to one or more of the amino acid residues in the enzymes or proteins. So groups are added to these amino acids. So whenever this addition takes place, the amino acid is modified. Whenever the amino acid is modified, it affects the structure and function of the protein or enzyme. Now coming to the common modifying groups involved in the covalent modification, examples are phosphoryl, acetyl, adenylyl, methyl, carboxyl, sulfate, uridyl. These are the most common groups involved in the covalent modifications. And now we know the common modifying groups, but how these groups are linked to the proteins or enzymes. So these groups are linked and removed from the regulated enzymes by separate enzymes. And now where these groups are added? These groups are added to amino acid residues in an enzyme or protein. So whenever a group is added to amino acid, amino acid is modified. So that modified form of amino acid is called as novel amino acid. So this novel amino acid or modified amino acid, it has some different properties when compared to the original amino acid before the modification. So because of this, the enzyme activity is changed. Now coming to the most common type of covalent modification that is phosphorylation. Phosphorylation means addition of phosphate group. Now example is glycogen phosphorylase, the key enzyme or rate limiting enzyme of glycogen metabolism that is glycogenolysis. So here the glycogen phosphorylase exists in two forms inactive and active form. Without phosphate group the glycogen phosphorylase is inactive. So when you add a phosphate group glycogen phosphorylase becomes active. Now addition of the phosphate group to the glycogen phosphorylase that is phosphorylation leads to conversion of inactive form of glycogen phosphorylase to active form of the glycogen phosphorylase. As we know that the phosphorylation reactions are catalyzed by separate enzymes that is protein kinases. Same way the removal of phosphate group from the protein or enzyme is also catalyzed by an enzyme called as protein phosphatase. So opposite happens in case of glycogen synthase. Glycogen synthase is active in dephosphorylated form. But when you add a phosphate group, glycogen synthase is converted into inactive form. The most common amino acid residues which are modified by this phosphorylation by the action of enzyme protein kinase are serine, threonine or tyrosine. So these amino acids are present at the active side of the enzyme. So whenever this phosphorylation takes place, this phosphorylation puts a large negative charge in this region of the enzyme which causes it to change its shape and activity. So that's why after phosphorylation the enzyme activity may be increased or decreased. The first two regulatory mechanisms that is allosteric regulation and covalent modification these are short term because they are not affecting the concentration of the enzymes but they are regulating the enzyme activity by altering the enzyme which is present in a cell. So thereby they are 
they have a qualitative effect they are not affecting the quantity of the enzyme so that's why it is called a short term regulation now coming to long term regulation that is induction and repression so this type of regulation takes place at the gene level now i'll see in detail about induction and repression so name itself indicates induction increases the enzyme synthesis so induction causes increased synthesis of the enzyme and that increased synthesis of enzyme in turn affects the intracellular levels of that particular enzyme so that means the concentration of enzyme is increased so whenever the concentration of the particular enzyme is increased it is responsible for the increased rate of a pathway so the overall effect is whenever induction takes place the rate of that particular pathway increases now coming to other part that is repression so whenever repression takes place it causes the decreased synthesis of enzyme and that leads to decreased intracellular concentration of that particular enzyme so whenever the concentration of enzyme is decreased in a cell it leads to decreased rate of the pathway in which it is involved so the overall effect of this repression is so whenever repression takes place the rate of that particular pathway is decreased now coming to the example of enzyme regulation by induction repression here if you take insulin insulin increases the concentration of key enzymes of glycolysis whereas it decreases the concentration of the key enzymes of the gluconeogenesis so insulin is inducing the enzymes of the glycolysis whereas it is repressing the enzymes of the gluconeogenesis so coming to the next example of enzyme regulation by induction repression here if you take insulin insulin increases the concentration of key enzymes of glycolysis whereas it is repressing the enzymes of the gluconeogenesis so insulin is inducing the enzymes of the glycolysis whereas it is repressing the enzymes of the